Kimmer Hashiv, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to paint fabric texture using more of a Spanish approach. It's a neat way of painting and you can get some smart effects with it so I hope you try it out. We'll start off by taking a bit of scale colour Caribbean blue and making it lighter with some white sands. Then we're going to desaturate that by adding a small touch of black. Making it more of a greyish tone. Use that to lay down an even base coat on the socks. Once you've finished the base coat, it should look something like this. Alright, so next we're going to create a transition on the palette by mixing a bit of white sands into our base coat and drawing it across the palette so that we get this range of values from dark to light. Once you have that, begin by taking a light colour from near the start of your gradient and we'll apply that onto the areas that we'll be catching the light. So on the back of the calf and the little bone that sticks out at the ankle, I think that's also called the ankle bone, <laughs> and along the, the front of the shin. Then we'll paint the top part of the socks where they're folded over. Being careful to leave the base colour showing in any spots where we want to create a shadow. When you're doing this, try to leave a dark line around the top. That will help to separate them from the skin of the legs. So this is going to be one of those methods where everything seems to be going wrong until the final step. So don't worry if you think things are looking bad as we progress through the layers. It's all going to come together at the end, you just need to trust the process. Once we have that in place, we can take some of that highlight colour, still with a fairly thin consistency, and we'll use fairly rough stippling to blend out the edges. Just placing unstudied dots on and around the edge of the highlight in order to obscure that obvious join. Doing that anywhere we've left an abrupt line between the base and highlight. So the idea here is to create some rough texture on the surface of the socks. Then later on we can refine it while adding some colour nuance with a light wash and some glazes. The idea is to keep going back to your gradient each time taking a lighter colour slowly working your way towards the end where you'll be adding your final layers. And you want to paint this onto parts where you're trying to create your highlights. So notice I'm leaving the base coat showing next to the ankle bone to create a shadow in the recesses there. Just applying the paint with that rough stippling technique in order to build up the brightness of the highlights. On these folded parts, I'll paint the highlights on normally, drawing the paint over the raised surfaces towards the side that will be facing the light. When you're applying the stippling, don't worry about keeping the dots really small and controlled, just slap them on. These are going to be wool socks and wool has quite a heavy looking texture to it, so you can make your dots fairly large and still get a good effect. Building up the brightness of the colour by layering on lots of indistinct rough dots, lightly tapping the surface with the end of the brush. Keeping the paint quite thin so we can better control the transparency of the layer. Adding more dots in the same spot will make it less transparent. However, try not to overlap too many dots while the paint is still wet or you run the risk of overworking the surface and creating unsightly lumps of texture. So just be mindful about that and allow the paint to dry before getting carried away with adding more dots. As I said at the start, it will look pretty ropey at this stage while you're building up the highlights, but things are going to make a lot more sense once we apply a bit of colour over the top. So don't stress if you're trying this out yourself and you don't think it's working out quite how you thought it would. Wait till you finish, then you can start to worry. Try and keep an eye out for areas where the transition appears very step-like and by that I mean where you can see where one colour ends and another begins. 
you want to reduce that as much as you can so that you have more of a feel of the color simply flowing gradually from one to another. Try to avoid abrupt jumps. So when you see that happening, add some dots around the edge of those areas, allowing them to spread out as you move further away from that step or edge. In this way, you can work out quite a good gradient moving from dark to light. Even if the surface looks a little rough, if you can get that slow movement through the layers, you're on the right track. For example, the shadow here at the ankle is very sudden, so we'll add a few dots just near the edge to make the transition into the shadow more relaxed. Alright, so I'm just going to keep working my way along the colours on the palette until we are basically painting with pure white sands. And when you get to this point, it's probably going to appear too bright on the socks when you're painting it on. But again, don't worry about that. We're going to be adding some glazes on top of this later. So this brightness will actually get reduced down quite a lot. So you actually want to push your highlights up a bit higher than you would normally. That way when we come to add our colour over the top, they are going to dull down to where we do want them to be. This is the same sort of trick you see a lot of Spanish painters using, so the likes of Sergio Calvo Miniatures. will over highlight and then reduce it down at the end with glazes. Big Dino uses this approach a lot too. He's one of my heroes. It's a cool idea, it's just a little difficult to wrap your head around because you have to put a lot of faith into that final step. But once you've done it a few times, you start to get more confidence in the approach because you know it's actually going to work. When you get around to using your brighter highlights, you can add in some texture along those folds at the top, just adding little dots on the raised parts. You don't bother with that in the first few layers because there's really not enough surface area to let you see them, so there's not really much point in putting them in for those initial layers. You should be able to tell the colour of the socks is quite ugly at the moment, but really that desaturated turquoise is just going to help us to create our shadows when we lay down the final glaze, and it's also going to give us a bit of colour variation as well. Always try and keep in mind that acrylic paints are transparent, so you don't need to start off with the colour you're actually going for. We'll be laying a dark violet over the top of this, and that turquoise will show through underneath it, hopefully making it appear even darker. Alright, so we're working with pure white sands now, so I'm trying to be a bit more careful about how I apply the highlights. The brighter your paint gets, the, the more obvious your dots will become, so as you work your way up through the layers, it's good to become more focused about what you're doing so that you can gradually refine things as your highlights get brighter. Essentially making your dots a bit smaller and more controlled as you move through the layers. Alright, so now that we've done that, we'll begin to shift the colour of the socks, which we'll make by mixing a bit of the Chimera Thalo Blue into some of the Chimera Magenta, giving us this really dark violet tone, which we've used throughout the model. Alright, so we're going to thin that down with a little water to somewhere around a light layer to heavy glaze consistency. So first we want to boost the shadow slightly in any areas where you would expect it to be darker. So for example here between the folds, we'll pull the paint down into those recesses towards where it goes under the leg. Still using that thin, basically glaze-like consistency to the paint. I'll also target those shadow areas around the ankle bones. This is just going to give them a slight boost in darkness. Once you're happy with that, thin the paint a little bit more so it's more of a thin glaze consistency. Again, just using water. And with a small amount of that in the brush, we're going to essentially apply it thinly over the whole surface of the socks. It's really the same idea as a wash, but we're not allowing it to form puddles. We're keeping it thin, allowing the glaze to lightly tint the surface. 
That should make the shadows a bit darker, while also reducing the highlights slightly, as well as shifting the colour of the socks more towards a light violet tone. It'll also even out some of your texture as well, so if it's a bit rough looking, this is going to help to soften it out. Most people working with this process tend to use an airbrush for this part, but I'm still a bit rubbish at using it, so I'll have to do this the old fashioned way for now. When you're thinking about using glazes in this way, it's important that you remember the colour that you have on a palette isn't going to be the one that ends up on the model. It's just going to tint what's already there, so usually you have to overshoot the colour you're actually looking for. For example, if you wanted a light pink tint to the surface, you'd actually go for more of a vibrant red. In this case, we want a slightly muted violet, so we're starting with a very dark violet. Remember, you're only applying a thin layer, so you need to make the colour more intense than the one you're looking to create. Just apply this over a few thin layers until you get it to the intensity of colour you're looking for. I'm happy to stop at about two layers here. You can go back in and fuss about with it some more here and there if you want to alter the intensity in any spots. I'd be careful about adding too many layers though, it's pretty easy to end up making it look too dark. If you are going to do some tweaking though, I would advise on focusing more on the shadow areas than the highlights. In the next video, we'll look at how to paint the bowling shoes. Thanks again. Bye for now.